Hey guys, it's Miss Louise. I'm so excited to bring our Bible story to you today. But first, let's say a prayer together before we get going. Okay, let's clap our hands. One, two, three. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for my friends at church, God. Uh, please help us to listen and understand your amazing story today. God, we love you so much. And we, we pray for our compassion kids, Lord, that you continue to keep them safe and healthy and growing them in their relationship with you. God, we love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, you guys, check this out. I want you to close your eyes for a moment, okay? Close your eyes. You, can, you don't have to close them tight, but I just want you to close your eyes. Now tell me, can you see anything with your eyes closed? Can you see anything? Can you see colors? Can you see shapes? What can you see when your eyes are closed? Or can you not really see anything with your eyes closed? All right, open your eyes. Guys, I don't know about you, but when my eyes are closed, I can't see anything. I just, I see darkness. I really can't see anything. Can you guys? I know I can't. Friends, when somebody is unable to see anything, even with their eyes open, it, it's called being blind. Not being able to see is, is called blindness. It's, it's being blind. And friends, our story today is about a man who was born blind. He was unable to see anything his entire life. But that was until Jesus came along and healed him of his blindness. <laughs> Amazing, right? Jesus heals a man who could not see. And we're going to hear all about it in our story today. But guys, in order to make sense of our story today, we need to review our big picture question, which is, why did God create people? Why did he? Why did he make all of us? Why did God create people? Why did he, why did he want to create us? There's a bunch of reasons, you guys, but the one we're looking at is that God created people to worship him, love him, and to show his glory. That's why God created people. He didn't, uh, he didn't just create people and then leave them on their own. God didn't just make Adam and Eve and the rest of the people on earth. And he didn't just make all of us and say, okay, good luck. You're on your own. No, 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 no. God wants to have a relationship with us through Jesus Christ. He knows us and he loves us so much and he made us with a purpose. It's so cool, you guys. So let's say our big picture question and answer together, okay? Why did God create people? God created people to worship him, love him, and show his glory. That's why God created people. That's why God created us. Super cool, you guys. So during his ministry on earth, Jesus taught people about God and his kingdom. And he also healed people. Jesus healed all kinds of people. We've heard some stories over the last few weeks that Jesus, he healed 10 men of their very serious skin disease called leprosy. Jesus healed 10 guys who had this disease, and one of them was saved. So cool. Then the week after that, you guys, we heard about how Jesus healed a woman who had been sick for 12 years, and Jesus also raised a little girl from the dead. That's amazing. And then, guys, last week, we heard a story about how Jesus made a man who was unable to walk Jesus made him able to walk. This man couldn't walk for 38 years and Jesus healed him and this man was able to walk. So cool, you guys. So this week, we're going to hear one more story about how Jesus worked a, a miracle to heal somebody. And um, our story is about Jesus healing a man who was blind, who was born blind, born unable to see, and Jesus heals him. So cool, you guys. So our story can be found in the book of John, in John chapter 9. Now, the book of John is the fourth book 
of the New Testament. So when you open your Bible, you see the Old Testament and the New Testament. So John is the fourth book of the New Testament. So let's read what happens uh, with this man and Jesus. So it says, Jesus, he was walking with his disciples when he saw a man who had been born blind. The disciples asked, teacher, why was this man born blind? Did this happen because of his sin or his parents' sin? And Jesus answered, neither his sin nor his parents' sin caused this. This man was born blind so that people could see God's power through him. Jesus would be on earth for a short time, so he healed people to show what God is like. Jesus said, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Then Jesus spit on the ground and made mud. Then he put the mud on the eyes of the man who was blind. Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, Jesus instructed. The man went and washed. When he came back, he could see. The man's neighbors were amazed. They took the man to the religious leaders and they asked him, how was he healed? And the man replied, a man put mud on my eyes. I washed and now I can see. The religious leaders were upset because Jesus had healed again on the Sabbath. They did not want to believe that Jesus could give sight to people who were blind. Over and over again, the man who was healed told the religious leaders what happened. The man believed Jesus must have come from God, but the religious leaders threw the man out of the synagogue. Jesus came to the man again and asked, Do you believe in the Son of Man? The man answered, Tell me who he is so I can believe in him. You have already seen him, Jesus replied. The Son of Man is talking to you now. The man said, I believe, Lord, and he worshiped Jesus. Our sin makes us unable to see the truth about God. Jesus came as a light in a dark world. He came to give us sight, true understanding of God and his kingdom. And those who trust in Jesus see who he is and worship him. What a great story, you guys. What a great story. I love it. This story gives us some wonderful news about pain and sickness and brokenness of the world. Guys, it's really common for us um, to think that, hey, if something bad is happening, maybe we're being punished for something. Like if something, if something bad's going on, it's easy to think like, man, did I do something to deserve this? Is God mad at me? D did I do something wrong? It's easy to feel that way. Uh, it can feel like God is punishing you. And this story, you guys, helps us see that sad and difficult times, they're not God's punishment necessarily, but they're ways that God can show his glory. So they're not necessarily punishment. When tough times come, it's not always a punishment, you guys. It's, it's showing that God can use his glory in our tough and crazy circumstances. The world is broken by sin. It's really important to remember this, that the world, it's broken by sin. And that means that we are all going to face sad and hard and difficult times in our lives. Our actions also have consequences, right? There's times when, um, when our sinful choices cause pain and suffering to us and to the people around us. But the natural consequences of foolish choices are not the same as God's choice to punish us. So when we have consequences for our sin, right? I, I like to use the example, if I tell a lie, right? The consequence is that I, I lose the trust of that person that I told that lie to. If I tell a lie to my mom, the consequence is that she may not trust me so much. That's a consequence of my of my sin, of my choosing to sin and to lie to her. The consequence is that she may not trust me 
as much anymore. That's a consequence of my sin. That doesn't mean that's not, that's not God punishing me for my sin. That's just a natural consequence of my sin that I lose my mom's trust. All right. Jesus's disciples thought that the man that was born blind, that he had done something wrong. They said to Jesus, hey, did this guy, was he born blind or, or you know, is he, is he blind because of something that he did of his sin? Or maybe, maybe his parents were bad and that's why he was born blind. So they assumed either he had wicked parents or the man himself was wicked. But Jesus said that the man's blindness, this man not being able to see, it was not a punishment. It was not a punishment. God created that man exactly the way that he wanted to. He loved and cared for that blind man, and he made him just the way he wanted. It was God's way of showing his power and glory in the world. And afterward, the man who had been blind, after Jesus healed him, the man had faith that Jesus is the Messiah. So Jesus healing this man helped the man put his faith in Jesus as the Messiah. But the Pharisees, the religious leaders, they refused to believe the truth. Jesus said that even though they could see with their eyes, they were the blind ones. They were the ones who were truly blind. And as you can imagine, this made the Pharisees really mad. They were like, hey, we're not blind. What are you talking about, Jesus? They got pretty upset about it. But Jesus, he wasn't talking about physical sight. He was talking about the ability to understand and believe the truth. So Jesus wasn't saying that the Pharisees were physically blind and that they couldn't see. He was saying that they were spiritually blind. They were not seeing that Jesus really is the Messiah. They were missing the whole point. But it's amazing, you guys. Our sin, it makes us unable to see the truth about God. Jesus came as a light in a dark world. He came to give us sight. Jesus came to give us uh, real sight, the ability to understand and and see um, and see that Jesus is the Messiah, true understanding of God and his kingdom. And those who trust in Jesus see who he really is and worship him. In a way, you guys, we are all born blind because we're all born in sin. We are all born with sin in our lives that we need Jesus to save us from. We can't understand God's word and, uh, and we don't see the truth of the gospel. But thankfully, you guys, we have God's word. We have the Bible and that helps us understand who God is, helps us understand who Jesus is, what he has done for us, God's great love for us. And we can have faith. We can read about Jesus. We can learn about him and we can begin to put our faith and trust in him. And when we do that, you guys, we get to have forever life with Jesus and with God in heaven. It's so awesome. And then we get to have a relationship with him right now too. We don't have to wait to just go to heaven. We get to have a relationship with Jesus right now. And so Jesus, he gave sight to a man who was blind. And this man, he didn't just get his sight back, but he was able to have a relationship with Jesus. So cool, you guys. So cool. So I have a question for you guys. Have you ever felt lonely in a difficult situation? Have you ever been going through a tough time and you just feel all alone? Maybe you feel like God is really far away. Maybe you're like, oh, what is going on? Like, is God punishing me? Do I deserve this? Why am I going through this tough time? I just, I feel so stuck and lonely. I feel like God is far away. Have you ever felt like that, you guys? I felt like that sometimes. I have felt, I felt lonely and discouraged and I've gone through some tough times too. And the man in our story today, when, when he was growing up 
blind? I imagine he felt very lonely. He was probably one of the only people around him in his life who couldn't see. And he probably, probably felt super lonely sometimes. But this is what's really important to remember. Um, that it, it may feel like God is distant. It may feel like God is far away. But the truth is, is that God is never far away. In real life and in reality, God is so close to us. So though we may feel like he's far away, he never is. He's never far away from us. He is so close to us all the time. The Bible tells us that God is always here. God is present. He is everywhere all of the time. And guys, if we have trusted in Jesus as well, if you have trusted in Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit in your life. The Holy Spirit is God with us. So if you have put your trust and faith in Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit. You have God with you all of the time. He is everywhere all of the time. He is close to us. He loves us so much. So we never really have to worry about God being far away because he's not. He is always close to us. And we can speak God's truth. We can remind ourselves the truth that God is never distant. So we may feel like he is sometimes, but then when we start to feel that way, we can go, uh-uh, I remember I remember that God is never far away. I know the truth that God is close to me. He's never far away from me. He is with me. He cares about me. He's going to help me through every tough thing in my life. And that's good news, you guys. So whenever we start feeling a certain way, we can remember, uh uh uh, the truth is that God is with me. He's never left me and he's never going to leave me. He loves me so much. He loves you so much. That's good news, you guys. And here's something we can do too. If we ever feel like we're distant from God or that God is distant from us, some things that we can do differently. Maybe, um, you know, whenever I, whenever I feel like God may be distant from me, maybe I'm not reading my Bible as much. Maybe I'm not praying as much and maybe I'm not worshiping God as much as I had been. But friends, I'm telling you, as soon as I start reading my Bible some more, as soon as I spend some more time in prayer and worshiping God, I begin to feel so much closer to him. So remember, God is never distant from you. He is never pulling away from you and saying, "Mm -mm, I don't want to be close to you. No, God never says that. He is always reaching out to us. He always wants to be close to us. He just wants us to pursue a friendship with him too. By reading our Bibles, praying and worshiping him, we can we can help ourselves feel closer to God, which is so cool. So, so cool. So, yeah, when he feels distant, just know that he is not distant. And remember what you can do to to get back into your relationship with God, to help uh, start growing your re- relationship and friendship with him again. Read the Bible, pray, and worship God. He loves you so much, you guys. Don't ever forget that. He loves you so, so much. It's great news, you guys. So we're going to practice our memory verse before we get going, okay? And here it is. I know it looks long, but we're going to do it together. I know you guys can do it. All right, so follow me, okay? Repeat after me. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. Uh, He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Guys, God loves us so much. He sent Jesus to save us. Jesus, he took on our sickness. He took on our pain. He took on our suffering. When he went and died on the cross for us, Jesus took all of it, all of the bad stuff that we have done, all of the bad stuff we're going to do. Guys, Jesus took all of it on himself and he died in our place. He died on the cross and rose again. He came back to life to forgive us 
for our sin. And that's amazing, you guys. I'm telling you, God loves us so much. And Jesus, he, he begins to heal the damage that sin causes um, in our lives. And we can thank Jesus for saving us. Just like this man in our story thanked Jesus for giving him sight when he was blind. We can thank Jesus for all that he does for us. So guys, let's pray before we say goodbye, okay? Clap our hands. One, two, three. Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for our Bible story of you healing this man who was born blind. He was never able to see for his whole life until you came along and helped him and healed him and made him able to see. And Jesus, he put his trust and faith in you. And that's awesome. Jesus, please help us to put our trust and faith in you. Help us to understand more about who you are and how much you love us and all that you have done to save us. We are so grateful and so thankful for what you have done. And we just love you so much, Jesus. And thank you for loving us too. In your name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, I love you all so much. I can't wait to see you in person so soon. I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic week, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.